Hey guys, welcome to Home Sweet Homeschool. If you're new here, my name is Ashley and I'm a homeschooling mom to one. And in today's video, I'm doing a Q&A. So I asked for questions, I guess a couple of weeks ago, and I'm gonna have to split this into two videos because I'm afraid once I start talking, we could just be here all day. So I'm gonna answer part of the questions in this one and then I'll do a part two video answering the other questions. And excuse my voice, I have some kind of like summer cold or something. So if I have to call for something, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. So let's get started with this q and I'm gonna try to keep it short and sweet, but sometimes when I start talking about homeschool and the things that I love, it's really hard for me to, um, you know, condense it. All right, so question number one <clears throat> is, what was your main reason for leaving public school and homeschooling? So the biggest reason was I wanted more time with my son. Um, I felt that our family time was just not there. Like by the time we got home from school in the afternoons, we were ill and we were tired and we were not getting the best of each other. And I knew there had to be a better way. Now there were other reasons that kind of led up to all this. If you don't know, I was a public school teacher for 13 years and my plan was that when I had children, they would just come to school with me and everything would just be wonderful because they would be at school with me and so I wouldn't miss out. And that's really not the case because he did come um, to school with me. He was in my kindergarten class. And of course that year was great because I was seeing him all day long. But um, things started to kind of fall apart starting in first grade. And it was just a, a bunch of different things. He is not a child that's going to fit in that public school mold. He is a, I mean, I don't even know how to describe him. He is an outside of the box thinker. He does not understand silly rules like we had at our school, which was like walk with your hands behind your back and walk in the third square and you couldn't talk at lunch. And he just couldn't handle all that stuff. He, um, it just wasn't for him. He did not fit in um, with the whole public school thing. I know some kids do and that's what's right for them, but it just was not for him. We looked at all the options because we were used to being a two income family and to go from two to one is a big deal. Um, so we had a lot of planning to do and it did take us from his first grade year through his third grade year um, when we ended up moving him to a private school to kind of work everything out so that I could quit my job and come home and homeschool him. And so um, I'm so, so thankful that we chose this route and these past four years have been so great. And I'm so thankful for the extra time that we've got to spend with my son. So biggest thing was time, but a whole bunch of other, a whole bunch of other things led up to it. All right, number two, what was the hardest lesson learned while homeschooling and how did you get through it? Well, let's see here. Um, there were kind of two things. The first one was I came from teaching kindergarten. My area that I love the most is your pre-K kindergarten first grade kids. They're so excited to learn. Everything we do is just so much fun and colorful. And uh, here I was um, when we started homeschooling teaching a fourth grader. And I have never been interested in upper elementary, definitely scared to death of middle school and would not step foot in a high school. You couldn't pay me enough to teach high school. Those are special people. And so going from teaching the little kids and, and all that to teaching a fourth grader was a very hard lesson for me. I really had to shift the way I thought about teaching and the way to approach teaching with my son. The second thing that was hard for me is to just come to the realization that it's not about me. It's not about what curriculum I think is best or that I like or that would work for me because I'm a very different learner than my son. And so I might have chose curriculum that probably would have worked better for me as a student and not for him. And that's where we had a lot of hiccups in the beginning. So just coming to the realization that this is for him and this is about him and what he needs. And it doesn't matter, you know, what I think would be great. Um, if it doesn't work for him, it doesn't work. And so that was really hard. And once I kind of realized that, it's been smooth sailing since then. Well, not every day. I mean, it's real life, but for the most part, it's been smooth sailing. All right, question number three. Which year of Gather Round has been your favorite so far? Hands down, year three is my favorite. 
I think they are written so, so well. They are so good. Um, I love the student notebooks. I love the way the teacher's guides are written and I love the seat work journals. So that by far year three, yes, hands down my favorite year of Gather Round. If you are new to Gather Round, pick one of those units. You're gonna love it. Number four kind of goes with that. What's your favorite Gather Round unit? Um, my son and I would both agree that our favorite Gather Round unit is the very first one we ever did and that was North American Birds. We still talk about this unit till this day. Um, because I mean, birds are so much a part of your life. They're just everywhere, obviously. And we talk about it all the time. It's, it's just crazy how much that comes up and the things that we learn. And guys, we did that three years ago. We're going into our fourth year with Gather Round. So that was three years ago and we're still talking about it. It's our favorite. So if you want kind of a good introduction to Gather Round, start with North American Birds. It's good. Number five, do you feel like you need to supplement with extras or do you feel that it is pretty open and go? And they are referring to Gather Round because if you don't know about this, our whole channel is about Gather Round and Campfire Curriculums because that's what we love. So their question is, do I feel like I have to supplement with extras with Gather Round or could I open and go? Now here's the thing. It is built to be open and go. You are supposed to open the teacher's guide, read the lesson, your students do your notebooks do not, they don't do your notebooks, they do their notebooks. Occasionally, you're gonna have to pull some supplies for some experiment or something, but honestly, it's made to be open and go. Now, does that mean I don't add anything to it? Um, usually, the only things I will add to it are books that we want to read to go along with the units, and occasionally, occasionally an activity, you know, a couple of activities. I'm not one of these parents that go out and buy all kinds of stuff because that's not, my son doesn't need all that. He, um, he likes to keep things pretty simple and that would just overwhelm him if I decorated the room and, um, well, especially since we don't have a school room, we just school wherever we want to, but that would overwhelm him, overwhelm him. So I don't tend to buy a lot of stuff. I also don't feel like you have to supplement. I'm very much at peace with the way they teach their language arts. I'm very much at peace with the way the whole thing is set up. And that did take me a while to get there um, because I am from the public school system. I taught in the public school system. I'm used to that progression, you know, from year to year. And so it did take me a while to just be at peace with how everything was presented and just knowing he's getting exactly what he needs. Now that doesn't mean that you don't need to supplement. My biggest recommendation if you're wanting to try Gather Round is to buy one unit, a full unit, and complete the entire thing. And from there, you can kind of see if it's gonna work for your family, or if you have a child that needs more grammar, or you have a child that needs more writing instruction, that's when you would want to supplement. Also for your high schoolers, you're gonna to have to add things like labs and more reading, and that's okay, that's understandable, and we're gonna cross that bridge when we get there. We're not there yet, but we will be there. So I think in some cases, you are gonna to have to supplement, but it really just depends on where you are in your homeschool journey and what your kids need. That's, that's the way I feel about it. All right, number six, what age is the best for using this curriculum? I have three boys, seven, five, and three, and I'm thinking of waiting to use Gather Round or Campfire until the youngest is older. What age would benefit the most? Okay, now I started Gather Round with a, uh, he was in fifth grade, so it's hard for me to really answer about the younger kids, but what I do know about both curriculums is they offer stuff for those young ages. It is, they are both designed to teach your entire family and they have levels for all your age ranges. Here's the thing, if it's something you're wanting to try, it doesn't hurt to purchase one unit and try it out with your kids. And I think she said her youngest was three. Your three-year-old is not gonna pick up the same things that your seven-year-old picks up, but they're gonna get something out of it through a sensory bin or a read aloud or a craft. They're all gonna get something different. So I would definitely urge you to try it out. I know that Gather Round has the letters and numbers in the Ready to Read program for like your six to seven-year-olds. And you could even read that aloud and your five-year-old and two-year-old or, or five and three-year-old are gonna benefit from that. And then campfires the same way, they have the different leveled guidebooks. And like I said, your kids are gonna pick up different things. They really are. 
And you can also take the unit if you buy the full bundle from Gather Round and you can do it later. That's what's so great about it is you can cycle back and do it when they're older. So it's really up to you, but I think the only way you're going to know is if you try something out. And maybe because your kids are so young, maybe one of the ready to reads from Gather Round would be better. Or start with something like North American Birds, Oceans, um, Space, something like that. And all of your kids can be involved and they're going to learn something. They are. If you're spending time with them and you're reading to them and you're engaging with them, they're going to pick up something. So I think they're for all ages and you won't know until you try it. All right. And my last question for this um, Q&A is what's your take on history using Gather Round? Is there enough? It's so hard fitting many units in. So here's my thing um, with the mini units. I know people do them a variety of ways. I know a lot of people do them alongside another unit. They might do it one or two days a week. But what I've learned for us and our home is that we do them all by themselves. And I know that makes people totally flip out because with a mini unit, you're not getting language arts. You know, you're not getting everything because they're very specific, the mini units are. Um, for me, that's okay. I don't flip out if we have to use five weeks and my son doesn't do grammar. I'm okay with that. But a lot of people are not, and so they do it along with another unit. And that's perfectly fine. We tend to get more out of it if we just do it in isolation, if we, we really focus on the unit. We did this year U.S. History 1, and our plan is to use all six of them. The first one was fabulous. My son's retention of that unit blew me away. We did not buy the student notebook um, for that. I'm not recommending you do that. I mean, that's up to you. I don't plan on buying any of the student notebooks for history because we do a lot of notebooking and narration, and I just feel like that's a better way for my son to show what he knows. But we loved U.S. History 1. It was written very well. It really kept my son engaged. Now, he was a seventh grader. He's 13. Um... So I think that depends too, but we think it's great. He learned so much. And at the end of um, four lessons, there's narration. And you guys, he can answer those questions with no problem. Even on days where I didn't think he was paying attention, he knew the answers to those questions. He was very much interested in it. And so much so that we are looking forward to U.S. History too. That's something I bought in the sale. So I think their history is great. I don't think you need to add anything to it. Now we do read alouds to go with it. We watch some videos, but that's very normal for Gather Round is to add a read aloud and to add some things to watch. And we did some hands-on things, um, but I don't think you need to go look for history anywhere else. Their US history will be one through six, and I think it'll be great. Our plan is also to use world history because they have um, ancient civilizations, they have Vikings, they're gonna have medieval times, and they're gonna have the Renaissance. And so those will be perfect for world history. So we don't plan on going anywhere else for our history. We are sticking with Gather Round. Now, as far as fitting it in, that's gonna be what works best for your family. You might wanna just have one day a week where you work on history, or two days a week where you do it in the afternoon, or if you wanna be like us, we do it all by itself. And um, we really enjoyed it, we thought it was great. So that's the end of my first part of the q and I'll have a later video coming out over part two where I'll answer about seven more questions. If you think of anything else that you want me to answer before next time, just leave it down in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching.